All right, I have no idea what time it is, but I want to open it up for some Q&A. So what questions can we um, conquer together this afternoon? Yes, thank you. So can, will parents have, read, read, ask me the question again. Yeah, so if someone's parents, if they should be a millennial, yes. but their parents are Gen X, okay. would that make them act more like a Gen Z normally? Yeah, that's a great question. So the question was if, uh, if someone um, has parents that are outside the, the normal uh, relationship, would that, does that change how the child's, generation behaves. So I'll give you an example. I have a friend that was raised by her grandparents. And, um, and she's my only example of this, but I've heard that this is true. Um, they behave more like their grandparents' generation. So instead of her uh, behaving, um, she would be a millennial, um, instead of behaving like um, the baby boomers who you would expect to be her parents, she actually takes on some of the behaviors of traditionalists, which are the age group just above that. Um, and it's interesting because her work ethic is such of a traditionalist, um, and there's nothing, um, nothing bad about baby boomers. They are the workaholics. Um, but traditionalists come and get the job done and go home, much different than baby boomers who come and get the job done and keep getting the job done until about midnight that night, right? And so, yeah, I know I've seen that in action, and she would say, well, that's what my grandparents would have me do. She definitely reflects back to who raised her, so I think that does create, because you have a different experience growing up, right? If that's what your, um, you know, the ethics, the values that you were instilled upon, um, yeah, if you have a, a very core family that instills their values for you, I think it makes a difference for sure. Yeah, that's a great question. Other questions? Yes? So as a general rule, stereotypes would be considered uh, negative, mm -hmm. but Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned it. And that's why I said I don't like to paint with a wide brush. And some of these things may not accurately reflect individuals. But I think it helps us have some understanding for how generations behave. Anyone in here could be different from some of the um, descriptors that we've used today. But I think it helps us have an understanding which prompts more discussion. OK, um, I recognize that you are independent in nature. Um, Talk to me about where your independence comes from, right? If you're working with someone like that, or if you're the one who's independent and your supervisor says, we're gonna collaborate on this, and you say, wow, um, I'm much more independent, so I will, I will be happy to work together, but it's gonna be a little stretch for me, right? So I think we have to understand, this is not gospel, right? Everyone's going to be their own individual selves, but I think it's a good place to start for having understanding just generationally. But there's so much more to individuals that we have to recognize, right? Does that help answer your question a little bit? Yeah. Good. Thank you. Other questions? Yes, over here. Well, will this generation uh, be more inclined to be job hoppers because of the strength of the current job market uh, and uh, because of their, you know, their, their wanting to change the world in some aspect, always looking for something to Yeah, great question. So the question was, um, are these folks going to be, Gen Zers going to be more job hoppers? Well, they do like variety. I think it's going to be what are we creating in workspaces to keep them happy where they're, while they're here? If I'm giving um, Gen Z and my organization opportunities for variety, am I giving them opportunities to level up? Am I giving them opportunities for flexibility? Am I, in other words, am I treating them according to their values? Is that possible in your organization? I think you'll be able to keep them longer. But I think when people see other opportunities and if they like variety and they want to go where they think they can make the most difference because they like meaningful work, it may be hard to keep them. But it all goes back to employee engagement. What am I doing to satisfy the needs of any generation, not just Gen Z, 
But any generation, what am I doing to help engage my employees? I think that really is the key here, is engagement. But yeah, they do like variety, but what am I doing to make that variety happen right here? Good question. What else? Yeah, Chris. Yes, everything. I, th I mean, Gen Zers, are you afraid that you might miss out something? What else is going on when you're in here right now? I don't know that it's, oh, yes. Well, they're missing out being in here. How about that? Um, but yeah, I think it's anything. I think they think, well, what is my buddy doing in his organization? I don't get to do that here. Why don't I get to, I'm going to go find a job like his because they get to do that there. Um, or, um, oh, someone else on my team gets to do this. Why don't I get to do that? I think there's this always looking for what else is out there because they're so used to doing all these different things. I mean, I, I, I think about our students today. You all do a lot of stuff. Not just come to your class and go home and study. Think of all the other things you do. Why do you do those things? To plug in, right? You're a part of this, right? To advance yourselves but also because I didn't want to miss out on this opportunity. And so I think they're always looking for, what am I missing? Can I take on one more thing? Um, that sure looks fun. I want to try that. And so I think there's just this constant looking around to see what, I, and I don't have that. I'm a different generation. Um, you know, I'm sure I miss out on plenty, and I'm tired, so I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm tired. But this generation is eager to do anything. They just are afraid they're going to miss something, right? Yeah. Yes. What do you hear back from police and Um, well, that's a great question. What do we hear from recent graduates about what I think that they are? Um, I think they're a little surprised in organizations today. Think about when you graduated from college and you went into the workforce. You had expectations for what work was going to be. Were those expectations met exactly how you thought? I think today's, uh, I think a lot of times people think it's going to be a lot like going to school. Um, I think that they just aren't quite sure what's going to be out there. I mean, we all, they, I, this is what I hear a lot. When they go to our wonderful career fairs that we have and they meet people and they shake hands and they go, oh yes, you're going to get lots of variety in this organization. And so they take a job and they think, well, doing three different things is not variety to me. I want to do 20 different things. So I think it's a matter of expectations. I think we need to set realistic expectations for our graduates and, um, and what's, what's really going to happen out there. Now, they may get into some organization um, that is very creative and innovative and doing some great things. We hear about those companies all the time. Um, but not every company is quite that much of a trendsetter. And so I think we need to set real expectations for um, our, st our students of today. There's lots of great opportunities out there, but not every organization lets you create your own title, right? So you kind of got to look for what's important to you as you're looking for a job. What's most important? Is it able to, ability to level up? Is it ability to gain experience so you can go off and do your own entrepreneurial thing one day? What are your goals for work? And what organization will help you meet those goals and give you a meaningful work along the way? Yeah. Questions? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was like you might lose your job. Exactly. And don't you dare do that here. Yeah, because I'm here, you're doing this job. And the other thing I was just thinking of, trying to tell Terry Joy, I worked for my last 15 years, always oil and gas, but the last 15 years, public utilities. And there's a gentleman there, I was just going up the stairs, and it said, come to the retirement party of blah, blah, blah. He's worked 65 years, and I, in my mind, I was like, what? And then I was trying to go, <laughs> Yeah. I mean, that is just, that's, in my mind, wrong, because he needed to open that job up for the next year. Ah, so see, so, I mean, how many of us know someone that's worked in an organization even more than yeah. 30 years? A few of us, but do we know someone that's worked in an organization for 65 years? I mean, I was here to go 65 to 65 years. Yeah. yeah. Right? That's a long time, but that's how it used to be, Right? Can it be that way again? Do we want it to be that way again? It's interesting to note the differences. And we still have people that are used to working in, in that type of format. What? You've been here three years and you're leaving us? What? I've been here 27 years. I haven't been here 27 years. Yeah, Actually, I'll grab you in a second. Say that because culturally, I do a lot of international work, and there are several countries that actually prohibit, it, it, where we think it's age discrimination, they actually have cut off dates, dates for retirement. So that at 60 or 
five, they're expecting that you're going to dinner to go out, so that they can bring the young people in. Well, and so honestly, yes. they have to because we're yeah. that public utility company, American Electric Power, the big, the third largest. You're in a world of hurt because yeah. everybody generation out. I mean, yeah. except for me, I kind of <laughs> I, I bailed as quick as I could. <laughs> That's yeah. right. <coughs> no, it's, it's crazy because now they, they're all retiring. They, they have, they it hurts succession planning, right? Yeah. Absolutely. That's right. We've got to have some new ideas. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Sure. You know, because the question is, if they, on the fear of missing out, if they miss out on an opportunity, does that discourage them enough where they don't even try again? And, and, and I'm going to speak from my non-Gen Z approach. I'm going to say probably not because they, are, they have that fear of missing out. They're probably going to wait for the next one, and they're going to, they're going to keep on, right? Well, I just was wondering because, um, an example, uh, a couple days ago, my daughter, um, so she's a part of, like, Taekwondo, um, doing splits at Life Church, doing all these other things. Right. I told her that she couldn't go to the state anymore because uh, of a certain reason. Right. And so she, I said, but you can still go to splits if you'd like to. She said, no, I don't want to go. <laughs> that sounds like a teenage girl right there. <laughs> I had one of those too. <laughs> have a little bit of an attitude, right? I don't think so. I think that probably will prompt them to want to try more, actually, right? Um, I think she was just trying to get mom's goat, so you'd let her do both, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. It's just kind of everybody under them is all one age group. It's true. But there are different challenges between, as you mentioned in this presentation. And one thing we try to do is to convey to the older managers that this new generation is not necessarily the same as us. We have to do some new things. Or do you know of any like resources or things that we could share? Right? Maybe we just need to have you come. Uh, <laughs> sure. Um, so I, I, I think you're so spot on. I think we are so used to saying, oh, that's millennial behavior. Uh, some, you know, some of our older millennials are nearing 40, right? And so um, that's different from someone who's just entering the workforce. They are different generations. And so we don't want to lump all that into that millennial behavior because it is quite different in many instances. So I think we need to start speaking up that we need to understand Gen Z because they are entering the workforce or they have been in it for two or three years, depending on at what age they are. Um, and so we have to really pay attention to that. I think if you're a Gen Zer, you need to market that we are a little different than millennials and know what's different about Gen Zers and millennials. So we need to speak to that. Um, the book that I love the most that I would tell everyone to read if you want to understand more about Gen Z is Gen Z at Work. And of course, the name of the people just left me. It is a father and son, David and... Someone can Google it real quick. It's called Gen Z at Work. It is a father and son. And the son is Gen Z. And it's so interesting to hear their different perspectives because dad is Gen X. And it, I love the format of this book because it is so good to hear Gen X's perspective on Gen Z and Gen Z going, uh, don't think so, dad. Right? It's such a great book. So I would encourage anyone, if you want to understand more about Gen Z, I'm happy to come visit with your um, departments or your companies, whatever. But I think it's important that we have an understanding that there is such a difference um, in those two generations. But we also have to understand, if you are born late in those millennial years, uh, meaning the 94, 95, 96, and you're, in, you're early in Gen Z, 96, 97, 98, um, you're going to have some associated behaviors because they, 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 we call those cuspers because they're on the cusp of two generations. And so we may see a little bit of blending in behaviors because they're, um, they have a little bit um, of influence both ways. And so if you may say, well, I was born in 96 and I'm much more collaborative, that's entirely possible. Even if you were born in 2002 and you're more collaborative than independent, great. You, you like collaboration more. You're a little different than perhaps your other generational folks. 
that may be your life experience. So we, I think we have to understand there, is, there really is quite a difference in those, and we need to not lump everyone into millennials. Let's start using the new terminology for our latest group entering the workforce, which is Gen Z. That's such a great question, yeah. Yes, Deontay. Uh, it's by Jonas Stillman and David Stillman. David and Skillman or Stillman? Stillman. Okay, um, David and Jonas Stillman for Gen Z at work. Thank you for looking that up, I appreciate it. Yes, back here, I'll get you in a second. Oh, that's so good. So I think, I, I think there's going to be some differences um, because your life experience is vastly different than we probably had here. However, um, I think we need to think about what was happening in your world during those years. Was technology emerging during those same years or were they earlier or later? And so you may have to adjust a little bit for some of these things based on what was happening um, in your country, in your area at those times. So that's where we can start to identify, because that's the experience we're looking for that helps those in those formative years. It almost seems like uh, my friend from India, there's a lag between this thing, the Gen Z of India, we live a little bit like the millennials. Yes, so, and it may be because you are lagging a little bit behind just time-wise, um, and so we need to think about that. So those folks that might fall in Gen Z in the United States might look a little bit more like a millennial in your country, but you're here, so I might, even though someone may say, oh, you're a Gen Z, you might go, yes, but I have some behaviors of millennials. And if you want to go into that, that probably would help them understand you a little bit better. That's an excellent question because I think we just assume, but we are um, a melting pot, especially here at OSU, and to understand the differences I think is so important. Yes, sir, I'll grab you in a second here. You mentioned Gen Z are independent and family-oriented. Yes. Um, okay, so let's talk about the family orientation. Interesting thing, um, uh, there seems to be a thing with Gen Xers. They, um, they tend to want to keep their family together and do things together a little bit more um, than a generation um, before them because baby boomers were working quite a bit. And since Gen Xers said, my parents were never there, I'm going to have all my kids with me all the time. Um, they, uh, Gen Xers are really the first group that did a lot of homeschooling right? Because they wanted to keep their family unit together. That's where that family orientation comes from. I still think they promote um, their family units to be independent. Take care of yourself. We are a unit. We're here to support you. We want you to feel a part of this group, but we support you doing whatever you want to do. They wanted to create that feeling of no matter what you want to do and what you want to accomplish, we're here to support you. And I think that's what helps, helps Gen Z want to do a whole lot more because they feel like they have the support. So that's where that kind of goes together. Yeah. I had a question right here. Yeah. Oh, good. Please. Um, because, and I have heard presentations about different generations before. But I would say even the workplace out there that you're going into does not have a clue who Gen Z is. That's right. They don't really know who millennials are. They don't know who, they only know what their generation is. Mm. And even if they've heard about the other generation, they have not embraced it because all they've done is hear about it Absolutely. Yeah, and I think sometimes we hear just the negative. Oh, that's a millennial behavior. And it's reflecting on something that someone may be doing that they're perceiving as negative, where it may just be different, right? And so I think that's really valid that we can say, you know, um, maybe we work differently because we were raised differently. Or how do you educate others in the differences? Or just asking questions. Um, you know, I, my dad sat at a company for 30 years. How long have you been here? Um, think having those conversations so we can have some understanding of no matter what generation you're speaking with. I think that helps us gain understanding, right? But there's lots of differences. Yes. Yes. It's a good training as he comes across as not defensive. Yeah, Jason Dorsey is that name, D O R S E Y. Yes, he's excellent. I agree completely. We've got time for probably a couple more questions. Yes, sir. Does altering an organization for the newer generations come across as off putting for other generations? 
Um, that's possible. Why are you changing it for them? Why didn't you change it for me? Um, what's wrong with the way we do it? Um, so perhaps, um, I'm going to probably leave that right there. <laughs> but yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. And I'm in the middle. Yes. Um, and so trying to make sure that I'm able to position to help strengthen and grow and nurture in fears. Yes. And be able to kind of up the channel, communicate how even though they're vastly different than the beginning, the benefits, all the things we talked about that Gen Zers bring to industry and work. And I, I find myself it's ch challenging to do that. So I don't know if like in your experience or like some advice you would give on Absolutely, and I think that has to go both ways. I think while we're educating um, the baby boomers about Gen Zers, we need to educate the Gen Zers about baby boomers. Um, I think there needs to be some real understanding of what that looks like. Um, yeah, you're kind of stuck in the middle. Um, but I appreciate the fact that you recognize that, that you probably are going to be a little bit of the go-between for understanding. Um, because some people would just go, that's just the way they are. But I think starting to understand and to share the why, um, they are, um, they're, not as, uh, they're not as competitive as you because they're more, uh, Gen Zers are more excited about balance than they are about competition. And so then that might help a baby boomer go, oh, you mean they don't want to work till midnight tonight? No, as a matter of fact, they'd like to go spend time with their family and go bike around the lake. And so helping them, because that's going to be different than maybe a baby boomer might expect. And at the same time, Gen Z may go, what do you mean I can't leave now? I know it's four, but I got things to do. Uh, and helping them understand, well, this is how it's going to be perceived. I, I think it's just going to be something that's going to be a part. All of us may have to deal with that, that we have to start having some understanding and some real conversations about the differences. Kind of to speaking to your point, we don't know what we don't know. We just think that's different, or in some cases, that's weird, or how dare they, when it's really just a matter of saying, well, let's look at why. Let's look at why they may do that. And I think it starts creating some understanding when we start to understand the why. Sometimes we have a greater, oh, okay. Um, but there's still going to be some, well, I don't get that. That's right. It's, it's a completely different life experience. So it's just going to take some education and time. So um, I, I, I wish upon you much um, patience. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. And I can tell you from my experience that they're completely skewed against Generation Z because they're done by my generation. Yep. So how does that relate to these young people going into a corporate environment? Because it's got to be, I mean, I'll tell you right now, it's skewed against them. We look for things like, every, did you invert it? Mm hmm. That's right, because who developed it? That's who developed it, is generations, baby boomers, early Gen Xers, depending on the organization. And so I think we have to be cognizant. Maybe it's time for an update. Maybe it's time for an update. If you haven't updated in your organization, your review process, I will tell you the newer generations don't want to have annual reviews. And you can go out there and Google that. There's all kinds of stuff. Am I speaking right, Tim? Uh, getting rid of, Tim and I work together in HR here, um, the, the, newer, the younger generations uh, favor more frequent feedback than once a year. Um, the older generations, what's wrong with once a year? Um, I, I still tell you how you're doing. Uh, and so you kind of have to, I think it's time that we think about what's working and what's not working. And what can help us be successful, maybe that we give more frequent feedback and that we change that process to uh, regular, you know, standing meetings or check-ins once a month or whatever it looks right in your organization. But I think if, if we've been doing some 30 years, it's probably time to have a little bit of an update, right? So I, but I think organizations have to have someone in their organization going, mm, hey, what about? 
and you have that realization how maybe we need to do things a little differently because life's a little different. I know I need to wrap up. I'm getting the I'm getting the uh, cane from the side of the stage here. Um, I, I let me. I've got one more click here for you. So if you all want to connect with me, um, there is my email. You can reach me out on um, LinkedIn as well. It probably doesn't say Training Ninja on LinkedIn, but um, I would I would be more than happy to continue the conversation or um, or visit with anyone that would like to talk more about this. I'm also here. I'm a Gen Xer, so I don't work 80 hours a week, but close. No. I thank you all so much. Thanks to our friends from Spirit for having me.